Welcome to the Cash Flow Couple Podcast. I am your hostess with the mostest, Wendy Williams. How you doing? Along with my husband, John Williams. But enough about us. We have a special guest today. Yes, we do. We, oh, you are in for a treat today. We have Uncle Carl, Carl Spielvogel, affectionately Close. known as Uncle Carl in the Charlotte market. Welcome, Uncle Carl. So, Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. We're glad that you are here. We are so excited. So Uncle Carl has been in the business since 2000, and you went from 2000 to 2008, and, and you lost everything in, in the market crash. So yep. we're looking forward to hearing that story. But then you started up a couple of years ago. And he has built a reputation for himself as the guy who can successfully take down deals that no one else will touch. The problem deals all the way from missing heirs to judgments and, and, and all that fun stuff. So we're, we're super, super excited that you are here. Thank you so much for, for joining us. How are you doing? How are you doing? I'm doing good. I'm drinking a little Guinness right now. I hope that's okay for the podcast. No, that's fine. Excellent. Okay. <laughs> that's a little dark for me. It's a, it's a, it's, it's the only thing I can find in the refrigerator at the shop where I'm at my office here and they don't keep a lot of beer and they'd get us. So I'm like, okay, I'll drink Guinness tonight. So. <laughs> yeah, that sounds good. <laughs> Do it. Do it. So welcome. We, um, let's start off by talking about something that we all have in common, which is we all went to Appalachian state university. So I, and I remember, um, you telling us a story about how you got into being uh, doing creative deals by uh, getting into a Subway franchise. Will you tell us that story? Yeah, it was great. I was going to school at Appalachian State. and What, what year was this? I think it was like 84, 85. Okay, so they're back okay. that far. Okay. And I was going to school at Appalachian and... Um, the manager was trying to buy the store from the owner who was a real estate agent that lived in Hendersonville and he's falling behind the payments. So we're talking to the owner. He said, okay, I'll sell you guys the store. I want 35,000 cash for the store, which, which was a good price. So we went around to all our relatives. Hey, we got this great opportunity. We just need 35,000. Will you invest in us? You know, do you believe in us? And they're like, we believe in you, but we're not going to give you any fucking money. <laughs> so they, you know, they, they didn't give us any money. So we were a little bit depressed. We're trying to figure it out. And then the manager walked out. The store was closed for three days. And so I called the owner up. I said, hey, look, I want to buy your store. I want to pay you full price. But I only have $1,000. How do we work this out? And he said, get in there and open the store. And I'll sell it to you for $1,000 down. No Whoa. way. Okay. So that's solving a problem, right? Yeah. I just, I just, I wanted it. I said, how do we do this? And he said, oh, I'll just, I'll, I'll finance it to you. I had a couple other problems. I didn't have $1,000. <laughs> Just $999 <laughs> short, huh? I, was, I, was a, I probably had $10 or $20. So I got my partner, got a partner. He put $1,000 down, and I put a Volvo station wagon in for a delivery vehicle. And on a handshake deal, one week before exams, I dropped out of school on a handshake deal. And we bought the Subway store. Nice. And that's sort of how I learned creative financing was sort of lucked into it. But I think it's being – I was there for the opportunity and it just worked out. And I'd love to say I was a brilliant marketer. I was like phenomenal at turning the store around. But what happened was um, we, we actually called the, the local newspaper up, the, the, the student newspaper and said, hey, we're two students. We just bought Subway. Why don't you do an article on us? That's a great so idea. Okay. Yeah, a idea. Did this article on us, two students buy Subway, and our sales went up like three four $400 a day. And that was one of the things that saved us. So, you know, I think we got lucky there, but it worked out. And then I used that creativity in the future. Like I wanted to open stores in Charlotte. So a friend of mine, uh, his name was Brent. He used to work at the Chapel Hill subway, came to me and said, Hey, I hear you own a subway. I like to own a subway too. And I said, well, you can just go ask your mom for $25,000. <laughs> I will get, I will, I will provide $25,000 worth of equipment. Well, at the time, so we had a leasing program, so I leased the equipment for $25,000. He put the $25,000 in. We upfitted the store. So I owned another store for basically $1,000. So I just sort of 
I don't know. We just sort of figured it out how, how to get it done. And then after that, what we do is when I, would, I had seven stores at one time, the way we would do it is I would just go sign the lease with no money and I'd be forced to figure it out. And it was nerve wracking. It drove me crazy, but it forced me into figuring out a partnership. I would take money, would pay bills and put it in and do crazy, crazy stuff. But that's how we did it. Just sort of on this, I'm going to sign the lease and I'll figure it out. And, and, and it worked. It did well. Interesting. So yeah. how long did you have the Subway franchises? Uh, probably 10, 15 years. Oh, okay. Wow. okay. Yeah, I did that. And then uh, I sold out and I got into, a friend of mine came to me one day and he said, hey, look, uh, there's this guy, Ron the Grand. He's teaching these real estate courses. Why don't you go to a course? So I went, got, took his course and started learning real estate, you know, got into real estate through, through that. And Ron had a lot of great creative ways to do stuff. And there's a guy named Cameron Dunlap who, who had some of the best creative stuff like 0% financing, such collateral subordination. I mean, so we, I learned a lot from, from these gurus and, and listening to their stuff and then putting it in, into play. Yeah, I think that's part of it. You know, a lot of people get education and education and education, but then they never implement. You know, so you actually went out and took the information you got and did something with it. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's key a lot of times. Yeah, that's awesome. So uh, tell us a little bit how you weathered uh, 2008, uh, uh, what you what you did right, what you did wrong. How did that work out for you? Yeah, so well, you got into the real estate around 2000, I guess, then you said, right? Yeah, and then 2000 took me. I'd love to say it was the economy and all that, but it, it was um, the way I did business is what took me out. I was writing on appreciation. I mean, I, everything was negative cash flowing. I had hard money loans. I'm like, look at me I'm making $50,000 a month in appreciation. This is great. I'm going to be so rich. Then all of a sudden, I couldn't get people qualified. I couldn't get my houses sold as a domino, and it took me out. So I wasn't buying for cash flow. I was buying for appreciation. So you and, were actually, were you buying these and then just reselling them? Or were they rentals or was it more like a fix well, and flip thing? Or? Well, most of them were rentals and I would fix a few and flip a few here and there and wholesale a few. But I, was, I had great, I had them all the key areas of Charlotte that, that were just transitioning. I'm like, wow, look at the wealth I'm building. But every month I was coming out of pocket because I had hard money loans. Right. Yeah. And I was trying to not, you know, pay a lot of taxes, you know, because of this stuff. So I couldn't refinance. So that was another stupid thing, uh, you know, I did. So it's a combination of stupid things that took me out. I'd, I'd love to blame the economy. I'd love to blame, although it didn't help, but it was, it was me being stupid. <laughs> so. so don't use hard money loans on long-term uh, finance. No. Okay. <laughs> hey, pay some taxes. So you, <laughs> too, you know, because when you have all these 15% interest rate stuff out there, it, it, you know, and then also another thing I do differently now is I have partners with deep pockets. So I was a little bit, hey, I'm going to do this myself. I did partner, but I'm like, hey, look at me beating my chest. I'm doing, making all this. I don't need to share. Well, it came back to get me. <laughs> yeah, that, that's something we talk a lot about a lot is not being a lone wolf, you know. Yeah. yeah. Uh, partner with other people, you know, they're use their time, use their resources, spread the risk around, you know, it's kind of what you were saying there. And uh, yeah. I think that's smart. That's good advice. So it was, you know, it was stupid. And then I did the car business for a while. My ex-girlfriend, that wasn't very smart at all. <laughs> <laughs> Not smart at all. Don't go in business with your ex-girlfriend. So, <laughs> yeah. This is all her fault. None of mine at all. Of course, yeah. <laughs> you know. That's why she's the ex-girlfriend, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. So yeah, I, I made some mistakes here and there. So. so so after that, how long did it take you to, were you just done with real estate at that point or? Trying to get back in. I was going to different meetings, and and, and then I was I, I was trying to do everything from like credit repair and all this stuff. And uh, I went to this one meeting um, up at the Kickstand restaurant. I ran into one of my old partners, uh, Mitch. And uh, Mitch, Linda Dane, and I used to do some teaching years ago. And um, Mitch said, "Hey, Carl, I've got this one. We talked for a while. I got this one property. It was a foreclosure. He said, if you can find this guy and and can get it under contract, we'll give you half the deal." Yeah. Oh. So what happened was we're I trying to, I didn't know about skip, tra skip tracing. We're just trying to figure it out. So we're searching on the internet and we found the guy's resume and he, what he did for a living was he was a, a used car turnaround specialist, a consultant. Okay. So like, okay. Okay. So I called the guy up and said, look, I got a used car dealership. It's struggling, which was the truth. And I need to hire you. 
And, he, and so the next day I hired the guy. He drove from, I think, Columbia, South Carolina. He drove up to the, uh, the car dealership. I got to know him. He worked on the car dealership. I said, hey, do you want any real estate in Charlotte? He goes, no, I don't want any property in Charlotte. I'm like, okay, okay. So we let him go back down to Columbia and then brought my partner Mitch in to, to introduce him and say, hey, my partner Mitch, we do real estate, da, 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 da. Then I called him up the next day and said, hey, you, you got a, we found you have a piece of property still that's in foreclosure. Would you like to sell it? And he's like, oh, that's funny. I just got a call about it. And uh, someone wants to give me 35000 I was like, oh, crap. I said, can you give me an hour and a half? Mitch and I will be down in Columbia. Let's go. Yeah, we'll go to lunch. So we drove down there with the contract. We said, hey, look, you know, I know this other guy's offering you 35000 but you know us, okay? Da, 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 da. We're going to give you, you know, I think it was 35, 36,000 and we signed the contract right there. So, I mean, how many people would have hired somebody to get to know them on the chance to make the deal? And uh, we turned out we made $58,000. It was just a piece of land we cleaned up and resold on that. First. That was my first deal getting back into the business. Oh, okay. Well, that's, that's not a bad first deal getting yeah, back, no kidding, right? right? Yeah, I, that, was, that was pretty nice. But here's where I was stupid again. I took <laughs> okay. a lot of and kept putting in this car business that was not doing well. So, gotcha. And then I owed, I owed everybody the son. So it was like, I couldn't go to any place without someone saying, Hey, don't you owe me like 3000? Like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was, it was pretty bad. So I've been paying off a lot of debts and stuff, but that, that was, that was the first deal back. And that, that was a lot of fun. So then Mitch, after that, he gave me another one. So, okay, this guy passed away and he's got a daughter who owns part of the property. Go figure it out. So we were able to scout out and we, we, we basically used this thing called Ben Verified. We got on her Facebook page. One of the things I've, I've learned is before you go do anything, figure out, spend a little time uh, getting to know the person or figure out what the situation is. So I was got on her Facebook page. I was going through it. I was like, she's like a big Panther fan. She loved the Panthers. And I had just gone to the Panther, to the Super Bowl um, the year before. I was like, hmm, okay. So we kept, I went and knocked on her door. I left her notes and stuff like that. And I came back. I had my Super Bowl hat, Super Bowl uh, jacket. I'm knocking on the door. <laughs> <laughs> he comes out. I said, hey, I left you some notes. Da, 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 da. You have this property. and We can help you out. It's in, in a foreclosure situation. You're an heir. And I said, and I was like tugging my hat going like this. She goes, oh, did you go to the Super Bowl? I said, oh, yeah, it's a great story. Let me tell well, you. Yes, I did. <laughs> I'm glad <Yeah>. you noticed. <laughs> And so we talked. It was great. We had a lot of fun and talked. And we ended up, and that deal was a little bit complicated because there's, she was an heir and there's another heir, like a half sister. And we had to get it all together. But we were able to get it together and buy the property. And then we took it and listed it. And we sold that one. We made 68000 on that. Nice. Wow. Okay. So after Mitch was, I got some more deals. Do you want to <laughs> yeah. Hey, yeah, sure. You so, found your niche. <laughs> you know, it's sort of like just figuring it out, jumping in and, you know, I'm, just going to figure out how to do it, you know? You well, know. tell us a, a, another, uh, some more about your creative um, deals, the, the, some of the big ones, bigger ones that you've done. Well, let me see. I'm going to go through. I got a little list here. Um, okay. There's one in Optimus Park. It was a foreclosure. and uh, That's here in Charlotte as well. It's in Charlotte. It's an yeah. it's emerging area. And so, I was like, okay. So we pulled it up. We found out there was five heirs and there was one heir that we did that, that turned out that no one's seen since 1977. Oh, wow. So, okay. <laughs> yeah. It was, it was like, okay, how are we going to do this? So I went and knocked on the door and luckily um, my, one of my attorneys lives, it works right around the corner and a lot of people in the neighborhood know him. Uh, I his name is Robert. But anyway, so I said, hey, I work with Robert. We, you know, the, your house is being foreclosed on and we can, you know, um, I work with the attorney Robert right around the corner and he goes, Oh yeah, I know Robert. I'm like, okay, cool. That, that, that helped out. Little name dropping. Yeah. Name dropping. You know, <laughs> I, I was hoping that he would know Robert cause Robert does a lot in the community. So we sat down and I said, you know, what's going on? He goes, well, he, he says there's four of us or five of us and there's one person that passed away and you know, we, we want to, we want to do something. And basically I worked a deal with four of the relatives. The fifth one wouldn't sell. And the one that was dead, would, you know, he wouldn't sell either. I mean, so, but we ended up. <laughs> you couldn't track him down or? <laughs> no, we never tracked him down. But anyways, we made a deal with four of them 
four relatives, and then the fifth one went and signed. So my partner went and made a separate deal with her. You know, we had, I mean, you got to get the deal. So we, I made a deal to pay them like 5,900 each. And then there was another, the other heir, he's got an agreement to make 12,000. And you know, it's not fair, but sometimes you got to do what you got to do. Yeah. Uh, but there's also another guy that had been snooping around trying to get the deal and offered him a lot less. And, uh, and this will come back and make sense. So we, we get the, the closing table, the four of the heirs, and the attorney says, okay, um, Mitch and Carl, you know, agreed to do this and da 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 da, and they did, and, and they found out that Mitch was paying the other relative more that wasn't at the thing. So everybody started getting mad and started cussing, and it was like, oh god, and it, it got it got messy. And there was also some judges and liens from the heirs that we had taken out, and he was getting mad and cussing and stuff like that. And I was like, oh, what are we gonna do? And finally, one of the one of the relatives, one of the heirs, said, okay, look, Carl's paying us more. The other guy was, and the house is going to foreclosure. Let's just go ahead and sign and get the deal done. And so they end up signing, and then the other heir came in the next day, and she got more money. You know, it is what it is. We had to get it done. But then we still have the one heir that's that's presumed dead. So we had to get a whole bunch of family affidavits saying that no one's seen him since 1977. Now, we don't have title insurance yet, but we will have title insurance soon. But we're in that property. We fix it up. We're into it for 75. We can sell it for two twenty five right now. But it's right near the light rail. We're going to keep it, so that could be a hundred and fifty thousand dollar deal. Nice. But that so you, was, uh, you just get uh, as much title as you can, and then uh, fix it up and what? Rent it out and wait. Yeah. yeah, we just rent it out, and then we can usually fix the title problems. You uh-huh. know, so far we have to fit. We so far we've been able to fix all the, the title problems. You know, time heals a lot of stuff. Yeah. And there's ways around things, but that that was a little crazy, crazy deal. That's uh, awesome. And then, um, trying to think, going through this one. Oh, we picked up another one. Like another way to find houses is vacant houses. So we pulled this one house up. Been vacant for almost ten years. Wow. wow. And we pulled up, and then there's like we found out there's three people on title, and two of them had passed away. So we went to the third track down the third heir, and I would go knock on her door. I'd leave notes. I'd let FedEx packages. <laughs> Even even some nights, I know it sounds crazy. I pull my car up, drink beer, and watch her to come out. Never got her, <laughs> never got. Her. But I was persistent. I kept leaving notes, everything. And finally, one day, she called me up and she said, "She said, Carl, I hear you're trying to get a hold of me. <laughs> I trying to get a hold. Of me. You got this property. Da 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 da. Had a foreclosure or lien issue in it that she needed to do something. So we met with her and we signed a contract to buy the property." And then it turned out that there was an IRS lien on it for two hundred forty-nine thousand. Ooh, for one that's heirs. quite a bit. Yeah, yeah. So most people would have said, "Okay, let's run." Yeah, we're like no, this is an opportunity. <laughs> so IRS liens typically stay on for ten years and they fall off, and, and IRS usually doesn't renew their liens. Okay, so what we did was uh, we've got three and a half more months now, and the IRS lien falls off. Oh. So what we did was. We got three properties. We gave her $40,000 to clear up her lien problems that she needed to get cleared up. And then we have the, we got one property for 75. She threw the lot in for free and then another house for 57,000. So we have $40,000 invested. And then August 18th, I think it is, we'll have clear title. And oh, wow. at that point, the balloon out and we'll, we'll pay her money. Cause we renegotiated after, after we signed the contract, we said, Hey, we got a problem. We still want to pay you, but this is how we have to structure it. So a lot of times you get it signed and you figure it out later. And what's really great about it is um, the, the house, the duplex we can sell for 150 to 170. So there's 75 to 85, maybe 90,000. The lot that she threw in for free, we can probably get 75,000 to maybe a hundred thousand. The house for 57,000, we probably can get one twenty five to one fifty four. So that deal is probably gonna be a two hundred and twenty five thousand dollar deal. We have forty thousand dollars invested. Wow. It, but that was being persistent, solving the problem, and uh, going after the the the, the with a lien we, and, and tracking down the the, um, the the vacant house. How long does that take to to track down somebody like that? Typically thirty minutes. Oh gosh, that's not bad. 
Yeah, I can track somebody down typically 30 minutes. Sometimes they're harder to find. It could, it could be a few days, but it doesn't take long to find, to track people down. Oh, yeah. It sounds like in this case, she just didn't want to talk to you for a while. <laughs> no, I mean, it was it was months and months of leaving Maybe notes on our door. That's, so that's what takes so long for them to call you back. <laughs> and I knew she was living there because she had a package on her front door that had her name on it. So like, okay, I'm in the right place. <laughs> right. <laughs> Something else I, I noticed about that deal. Um, I don't believe you've given her any money until the title clears. Is that right? Well, we paid forty thousand dollars of of liens against. Okay. The so we do have forty thousand dollars invested. So you know we just got to wait out to August eighteenth and everything's clear. And worst case, you know, we won't pay her until that's cleared off. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Smart. So uh, what else are you working on? Are you working on a? Oh, uh, Carl's got all the deals. I uh, know, right? I want, oh, I want to, crazy, crazy deals. Do, do we get to talk about the goat farm, or can we talk about oh, that later? Or? I, got, uh, this, um, I hang out at this bar, and uh, this is the bartender's mom had a property needed to sell. Long story was, um, and it was right outside TGK. So there's always some weird, you know, I've got my main ways I find stuff, but there's so many little ways. So <laughs> our tenants can be good sources for properties too. Oh, that's hilarious. So we ended up buying it from her for, I think it's like 50000 And what happened was Tiga K is a city. It goes right around the property. It's it, But this is in the county. So I want to be able to build, if it's in Tiga K in the city limits, I could build two houses. In the county, I could only build one. So I called the city manager up and said, hey, I, I got this property. I want you to annex it in because the annex is, you know, we can build two nice houses there. And he said, uh, why don't you come in? I want to talk to you because um, we're building a big uh, park. We want to buy this property. I'm like, oh, okay, cool. Okay. I said, well, you know, we went back and forth. With it and and, and um, he, I think he initially offered me eighty or 90000 but then when he found out we got it for fifty, he came back and said, I, I can give you guys 65000 Right. Yeah. 65000 Okay. So I said, let me ask you this. This property is in the, the county, correct? You have no jurisdiction on it, correct? He goes, yeah, we don't. I said, well, it's zone agriculture. He goes, yeah. So I can put goats and roosters on it. He just looked at me weird and goes, uh, technically you can. I said, okay. <laughs> so last week I was down in TGK and I put my little signs up. Uncle Carl's goat farm coming soon. I ordered some goats and we're going to have put a little mini goat farm and we'll, we'll just see if they, they want to change their offer. I don't oh know. Oh my we'll, God. We'll you going to set happens. up a little petting zoo? Oh, yeah. And a petting the, zoo, maybe the children. Goat. Do you know, I've done some research. Goats can climb trees. <laughs> <laughs> you have, you're right. I've seen that. Yeah. And so, you know, if we're going to have amazing goat facts and maybe have a party, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll see. <laughs> bite the mater TK. Hopefully he'll come down and, you know, <laughs> get not, some sheep. Maybe yeah. some cows and the kids can milk all the cows and well, maybe teach some people how to um, milk the goats and sell milk. goat milk. Yep. And, you there know, you we're, go. There we're, you we're, go. Yeah, fun with it. And <laughs> it's hopefully, like I said, I'm, I'm, it's an official invite to the mayor of TGK to come down and uh, party with us at the goat farm. Oh my God. That is so <laughs> funny. That is so funny. That's great. Uh, That's we'll great. see what happens. We'll see if the offer goes up. Man, creative. You know, <laughs> Carl told us this story earlier, and I didn't believe it. And then two days later, I see him on Facebook Live putting the signs up. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I'm pretty sure it's actually happening. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I've got some goats on order. So, I mean, we'll have, we'll have fun with it. So, <laughs> goats on order. <laughs> yep. You can rent goats. So, <laughs> yes. I heard you could rent goats. <laughs> <laughs> Only Uncle Carl. <laughs> yeah, but I think we we actually can fi fix it up and get one fifty for it. So we just want the city to offer us something decent, and we'll we'll work a deal with them. But yeah, you know, I'm sense. have I'm have fun with them. You know, it's, it's, <laughs> yeah, that's what it's all about. Yeah, solving problems and having fun. Yeah, and then I'll, I'll tell you quick about our our biggest deal ever. It was a uh, came from a bird dog. He found this property in a great area. Said, "Hey, look, this guy passed away." There's some vagrants and squatters living in the house and you know, gave us the basic information. So he brought it to us. I was like, okay, let's, let's try to find out what happened. So um, we pulled the obit. We, we looked into to, to the, the guy that passed away. And um, then I went to, there's some, he had uh, relatives that lived in Charlotte. So I went and knocked on their doors and was talking to them. And they didn't even know he had passed away. So obviously not a close family. 
at all. They're like, oh, he died? I said, yes. <laughs> that, were they grinning? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh. So we're like, okay, we need to figure out who his heirs are so we can buy this property. Obviously, it has lots of problems. So we spent about nine months. I went to graveyards. I made phone calls. I used been verified. I worked off and on for nine months. And we knew that the way the inheritance laws go, it went to his, he passed away and he, his wife had passed away earlier. So it went to his brother. Well, his brother died in Crete in 1973. Oh, wow. Okay. But then it went to his two sons. Okay. And we were looking for him. We're really good at tracking people down. We couldn't find them anywhere. We're like, why can we not find these guys? What happened? And then one day Maria works with us. She's like, Carl, what if the mom got remarried and the boys changed their names? Oh. Oh, so we're like, okay. So we'd heard from one of the relatives that she got remarried to a police officer somewhere outside of D.C., so we had a genealogist. We tell them too much that people can learn a lot, can make a lot of money from this. But anyway, <laughs> we hired a genealogist, and she was searching through all the records and found out that um, uh, uh, she got remarried in, in, in D.C. She found an article and found the name had been changed. So then we started searching down for the kids, and we eventually found them. And there's a whole lot of problems with this. First of all, there's a niece there that at least for a dollar a month to 2040. Okay. She had moved in and these druggies moved in with her, you know, so first of all, we bought her lease out. Okay. The second problem was there's code violations yeah. on the property. Then it was getting ready to go to tax foreclosure. And then there was, there was some uh, title issues. So we had all these problems. We called up the heirs and said, look, you guys are heirs this property. It's in Charlotte, da, 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 da. And we like to buy it from you. They thought it was a scam. They thought we were trying to scam them. I said, yeah. ask your mom about your uncle. So they, they, they asked the mom and they said, okay, it's true. Da, da, da. And I said, so we sent them all the paperwork, the lease, all the information, the code stuff. It's what I call setting the table. Here's all, all the problems. And I said, you know, we're going to pay you $35,000 for the property. And they go, I said, by the way, it goes for sale next week in the tax foreclosure. And you have all these title issues that have to be straightened out. And he said, you know what? It's found money. We'll take it. Yeah. They took the 35,000. We just prehabbed it, cleaned it up, did a few little things. And then uh, I can't believe it, but somebody paid us 310,000 for a teardown. Oh, wow. Oh, my. We made, you now we paid our bird dog 6,000. We paid our staff bonuses after paying everybody holding costs. Totally, and we made two hundred forty-three thousand on that one deal. That's Whoa, amazing. That's incredible. That's amazing. That was that was pretty cool. That was a pretty pretty killer deal so. for nine months worth of work. We had held another six months after we bought it to clear the title. Oh wow! No kidding. Yeah. yeah. Well, that, so, that's persistence and yeah. sticking with it. You know, I, I think for a lot sure. of people would have given up oh, yeah. before then yeah, or totally. would have said, ah, it's too much work. Yeah, I would have said, oh, hey, let's call Uncle Carl. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that, that was our best deal ever. I mean, but we do have, we do have some other ones like um, some other ones are going to be like a hundred thousand plus deals too. We got one on another vacant house where it ended up having six different people pass away, 15 heirs. Wow. Goodness. We had to go everywhere from Abbeville, South Carolina to Evansville, Ohio to get signatures. Like personally? Um, well, I drove down to Abbeville. I'll drive anywhere. So I was down there. <laughs> and, and, and what we did is usually pick one person in the family who sort of knows everybody. Uh, we paid her $2,000 bonus to coordinate everyone together. Oh, that's so, genius. So when I went down to Abbeville, we had most of the people meet there, sign everything. And then um, Denia who works for us, she was actually about an hour or 45 minutes away from Ev Evansville. Um, she was up there for like vacation. So she drove and got the signatures up there. So we were able to put that together. The property is probably worth right now, probably one, probably 130 to 140. I'm thinking in the market and we're into it for maybe 25,000. Wow. Yeah. But it, it's, it's messy. We still got to restore it to get the title insurance, you know, so that'll be a hundred thousand dollar plus deal on a vacant house. So you do, do you find a lot of times these folks don't even know there's a house that exists? Yeah. I mean, there's like one of the heirs go, yeah, that was my uh, aunt's house. And I've been there years ago. And I said, well, you're one of the heirs. And, and a lot of the other heirs, they're like, it's found money. They don't even know. That's, you know I mean, yeah, you just. You just put money in their pocket. That's Wow. Like that's, you said, uh, 
if you if you happen to have come along, you're providing a service and yeah, a value to them. That's incredible. And then taking on all mm-hmm. the cleaning up the title and getting everybody together. And yep. yeah, yeah, that that's a lot of work, you know. So I, I think that's uh, uh, you know, bring value to the marketplace, and you and you it'll come back to you, right? And all these people would have never gotten money, anything, because they would have eventually lost the property to, right. to the tax foreclosures or whatever. They would never have gotten anything. So you know. Some people say, you know, you guys should pay more money or whatever, but you know, this is found money. This is messy stuff and we're putting it together. So for sure, for sure. Yeah, that's incredible. So you got any other ones for us? Oh, I can tell you stories all night long. (laughs) We could listen to Uncle Carl's stories all night long. I have fun with this. I I enjoy it. I just have a passion. You can tell, you can tell, you can hear it in your voice and you're always real fun passion about it it's a lot of work like we we think every deal we're going to get and we think every deal we're going to solve and that's how we go into it we just like okay like for example we just bought half a house the other day you just say half a house yeah so how do you buy half a house and make money uh well there's like there's like um two cousins i think that own this house okay? okay and they had a falling out okay and so we made agreement with the one cousin to buy her portion. Uh-huh. Now we, you know, we knew we still had to get the other one and we're like, okay, we're just going to get it done. So we, we made a deal to buy her portion out. And the other one we kept, we tracked her down. We kept calling her, sending her texts. We sent FedEx pack, nothing. She's like, I even drove down to South Carolina to talk to her mom. Her mom wouldn't come to the door. I kept leaving notes all on the door to her mom. Please, you know that. And I finally called her uncle and he said, oh, leave her alone. She doesn't have anything to do. She doesn't want that house. I said, well, I'm going to give her money. He goes, she doesn't care. Leave her alone. So I was like, oh, crap. We got half the house. We got to get the other half. <laughs> and tomorrow is the last day of the 10-day upset period. I was like, we're done. We're done. We have a, we have a, uh, Maria is one of our partners. And the day before yesterday, she was like, okay, I have an idea. I'm going to send a bunch of candy bars to her and say, you're missing out. And she did this. We FedExed them. They arrived today. She says, you're missing out on a sweet deal. Please call us. Da, 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 da. Well, she called us to say, look, leave me alone. Um, I'm tired of you guys messing with me. And Marie is a life coach. She's really good. She's able to just sit there and go through all this stuff. And she's able to eventually work a deal with her. After she said, look, I told you people, leave me alone. Don't bother me. Stop bothering me. I don't, I don't need to do the house. So we're buying her half out now. We are attorney Harry Marsh working on documents tonight. So if you know, it could still fall apart, but we have a deal. We're going to rush and get the signatures, everything done. So if that goes right, there's probably there's about 125,000 equity or more in the house. Yeah. But we are taking a chance because there's an estate too, and we got to finish that out. So there's a lot of there's a lot of messy parts. But if everything goes right, I'm not saying will we have gotten both parts. So that was just nuts. You know, I, I can't believe we got through it. I'd love to say it was me and all my brain power, but it was Maria's thinking that got that deal done. That's incredible. That's yeah. awesome. That's exciting. I, that is just, you have such an exciting life. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty crazy, the stuff that, I mean, you know, just, you know, from dealing with guns and all sorts of stuff. You never, you never know what we're going to come across. Have some, you, some people would say exciting. Some people might say scary. <laughs> But yeah, I guess I guess it's a calculated risk, right? Yeah, because we knock on doors. You know, um, there's one door. Uh, me and, and one of my business partners, Vincent, we're knocking on this one door, and um, he was knocking real loud. She wouldn't come to the door, and then I'm just sort of going like this, waiting and turn around, and I see my buddy Vincent. He jumps, jumps down, and sort of runs around the corner. I'm like, huh? I look out. She goes, I'll never forget a 38 nickel plated 38 pointed right at my head. Oh my god. And I was like, oh, shit. She goes, whatever you're selling, I ain't buying. <laughs> I was like, ma'am, I'm sorry. I'm at the wrong house. I apologize. <laughs> and I, I, I ran off. I was like, oh, my God. Hi. Shot. Now, I think you need to be more observant. I noticed when we left that there's a little no trespassing sign. And I noticed that one of the um, windows was broken out. There's a, there's a bullet hole that had been shot out of it. So I wasn't very observant when I went to knock on that door. Um, so that was pretty scary, you know. And after that, my buddy Vincent, he went home, and I calmed down. I said, okay, 
what are the likelihood of getting gunpointing you twice in one day? I went <laughs> outdoors the rest of the day. Uh, but that was pretty scary. That was because it was, there's no safety on that. And she's pointing right at my head. Oh, like, my goodness. But you jumped right back on the horse oh, and wow. went out and door knocking. And you just kept right on door knocking. I said, I said look, what a, what a likelihood. I mean, I don't think I'm going to yeah. get. Another gun pulled on me today, and it didn't. That's true. That's and true. now you know to check for bullet holes, right? You have, you have <laughs> something <laughs> extra. Hole, no trespassing sign. So <laughs> you learned so we something. Didn't the, we didn't get that deal. So, you know, so I called. You guys know David Roberts, a local investor that him and I, we, yeah. Yeah, we go after deals together. So I called David Roberts up and said, hey, I've got a great door for you to go knock on. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I did, but then I joked about it, and I told him, said, hey, you know this house? He goes, yeah, I know that lady, da, da, da. And he laughed. I told him the story, you know, and how I was going to send him out there. And, you know, it's we have competition, but we like to cut up and have a good time. So, <laughs> Yep, that's always fun, too. Well, the children just got home, so we're going to have to wrap it up. So okay. if, uh, if anybody has a deal that you don't know how to get done, uh, call Uncle Carl. So, Uncle Carl, how can everybody contact you? Uh, my number is 704-995-5385 or um, it's Carl's Real Estate Solutions at Gmail. That's Carl with a K. It's plural. So, it's Carl's Real Estate Solutions at Gmail. Do not call me. Text me. <laughs> okay. Text you. Okay. Hey, the background. <laughs> There's the kids. <laughs> they just got home from the playground. Uh, we tried to send them away. <laughs> Robbery. Hey, <laughs> go on. Say hi to Uncle Carl, everybody. Hey. hey. <laughs> All right, well say hi now. You might. Uh, <laughs> but but I'll, one couple things I want to tell people. It's I think it's I made a couple quick notes that I think um, a lot of it is just jump in and figure it out and uh, always be looking for opportunities. Always be curious. And don't worry if you don't totally understand everything. It's better to be in action and fail and keep going. I think too many people are like, I got to learn this. I got to learn that. No. Yeah. Go. Yep. Just be the night. Just do it. Yep. Go out there and figure it out. Yeah. We, uh, we talk a lot about that in the um, kingdom real estate that we're, that we're all um, members of. And we talk a lot about um, just don't sit there and educate yourself to death you're going to learn a whole lot more if you actually go out and do something. Yep. So that, that you got to do. And I had a great time partying you guys this weekend or last weekend, whatever it was. It was fun, it, wasn't it? We had a good time. A, it's a great group of people, yeah. Yeah. really smart, a lot of great ideas and stuff yeah. like that. So, <laughs> yeah. So, like I said, it was, it was a lot of fun. and um, We had a good time. See if there's anything else. But, yeah, I've got a lot of other crazy deals that um, – get back and tell you about and, 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 and different ways to find property. The main thing is concentrate on finding properties, go out there and find them, do what it takes to find the deals and create the deals. Don't worry about, Oh, I got to have LLC. I got to have this. Just go find them. Right. Don't worry about exit strategies. Don't worry about buyers. None of that matters. So good stuff. Good stuff. Uncle Carl. Thank you cool. so much for for uh, coming on and talking to our listeners. When we we have really enjoyed um, talking to you, we enjoyed That's hanging great. out with you um, a couple of weekends ago, and and can't wait to hear about some more crazy Carl stories. Oh, some other crazy stories. So. <laughs> yeah, really appreciate having you on. Yep, really sure. really appreciate it. Yep. All right. Well, we'll talk to you soon. Okay. All right. Thanks a lot. Bye.